Thank you for tuning in to Legacy Church Online. We hope that you are gathering your family together and preparing your hearts for God to move in your homes, in our nation, and across this world. We challenge you to be engaged during this service. Please feel free to leave a positive comment and share the link to your friends and family to join us. We love you and we hope that you are blessed today. Welcome to Legacy Church Online. Thank you for joining us. Let's worship together. Not gonna wait, wait for the walls to fall. Cause I know a name that will bring them down. I've got a praise waking within my soul. And I'm not ashamed to declare it now. The light of the world, trample the dark. Every fear must bow Throw off your chains Jesus destroy them all And up from the grave He is with us now The light of the world Trample the darkness And nothing can stop it You are the God of the promise good when there's nothing good in me 
You are love, you are love on display for all to see. You are light, you are light when the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sin. You are peace, you are peace when my fear is crippling. You are true, you are true, even in my wandering. You are joy, you are joy, you're the reason that I sing. You are life, you are life, in you death has lost its sting. I'm running to your arms and the riches of your love will always be enough and nothing compares to your embrace light of the world forever Jesus, 
and my heart will sing no other name Jesus Jesus
is with you in the morning, in the evening, in your coming, in your going, in your weeping, rejoicing. He is for you. He is for you. joining us. Uh, we're so glad that you've come this afternoon. Uh, Matthew chapter 6. If you have your Bibles, you could turn with us there. Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to start at verse 31 uh, as we get there. We're in a series entitled Tell the World, and this morning I want to want to tell you this morning that you need to get an alignment. Get an alignment. I was thinking about how you could drive your car up on a sidewalk, and I've done it many times. I've hit the curb, or I've run into a curb, and I've knocked the front wheels of my car out of alignment. The next thing you know, you'll be driving down the road, and uh, uh, you may hit 60 or 70 miles an hour, and you feel the front end of that car uh, wobbling and vibrating you. It feels like you're just going to fly out of the fly out of the car. Well, being out of alignment will hinder you from going to where you're supposed to go because something isn't right. Something's not right. 
So the vehicle will many times have a mind of its own then. It'll begin to take you really hard left or really hard right when you're trying to stay straight. My old truck right now, the old green machine, I can just be driving down the highway and all of a sudden she'll just kind of veer one way or the other. And, and uh, so it's, uh, uh, it needs, probably needs an alignment. Now Matthew chapter 6 and verse 31, if you go there, the scripture says it like this. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? Verse 32, these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows your needs. He tells us, verse 33, this is, this is a, where we're taking our text. This is our focus today. He says, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and God will give you everything that you need. One more time. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything that you need. So point number one this morning, if you're taking notes in our get in alignment sermon this morning is the alignment of priorities. That's exactly what Matthew chapter six and verse 33 tells us. The alignment of priorities. When your passion and your hunger for God and your emotions, when we've got no spiritual hunger, we've got no spiritual hunger for the word, or we've got no spiritual hunger for the things of God or for the purposes of God, it's a very clear sign that you are out of alignment with the kingdom of God. Verse 33 teaches us and encourages us to seek first the kingdom of God. I hope this is an encouraging word to you today. That's the very first thing that we are to do. We're to seek him first. In other words, you have to literally dethrone anything and everything that stands between you and your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. In every one of my studies in the word of God, you can, uh, you can begin to look at and begin to focus on. You'll find that the Bible says if you will do this first, then God will do these things. It, it, you could see it all through the Old Testament. You could see it all through the New Testament. And he gives us a, a, a prerequisite, if you will, a prerequisite. And so doing all my studies, I found that the Bible teaches us if you'll do this first, with the promise that if you do, it will align you for the blessings that are unprecedented, the blessings that you have never experienced before, if we'll walk in that frame. So this morning, I've got seven things. Point, uh, point number one, get in, uh, get in alignment with your priorities. So God said, before you do anything else, do this first. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. He says, follow my word first. Follow my instructions first, then my blessings, and then my favor will overtake you. I was paying attention to this, and I've taught on this before, talked about it before. In Africa and other, uh, many other parts of the world, they'll trap monkeys with a very simple device. This isn't uh, necessarily what they use, but it's all that I could find for uh, this illustration. Something that's just big enough to get your hand in, but once you get your hand in there and you close around whatever's on the inside of there, maybe uh, maybe some uh, pieces of nuts or, or, or some pieces of fruit, whatever it is that that monkey's trying to get his hands on. So he'll put his hand in that gourd or he'll put his hand even in a hole in the ground. He'll get his hand in there just enough just just inside there just enough and he'll get a hold of whatever it is that he's that he's got and then he can't get his fist free he can't get his hand out he can't get away from what it is there and he wants that piece of fruit so bad he wants that item so bad those uh those nuts or those fruits or whatever is there he won't he will not let go of it and they'll walk up and they'll just be able to capture that monkey and it's just like us many times as human beings we'll allow the the devil just to kind of get us trapped in and focused in on anything else and that's what I'm trying to say to you this morning anything you are trying to hold on to anything that you are focused in on so much more than the kingdom of God is hindering you from an alignment of God's blessing 
And as we get in alignment with the kingdom of God first, God adds all of these other things. You can say that with me this morning, if you will. All these other things, all those other things that we long for, all those other things that we're wishing for, all those things that we are dreaming for, God will add those things unto us. So we must start in with and through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's our focus. That's our focal point. Look at this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. The Bible says, Now may the God of peace, may the God of peace make you holy in every way, in every way. Now watch him qualify it right here. It says, And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Now, I want you to see something right here. Scripture states that God will, pr will preserve you, spirit, soul, and body. Did you see the order? Are you paying attention to the order? Spirit, soul, and body. So many times our order is our body first. I've got to take care of me. I've got to take care of my flesh. And then I'll worry about all the other things. And so we just kind of put that in the order of the things that we want. We, we'll go with our soul. Then maybe we, we might go with our emotions, maybe our attitude, maybe our happiness. And then many times we put our spirit last. Well, I want you to see God's priority here from Scripture, straight from Scripture. He says, seek first the kingdom of God. It's his spirit first. It's his kingdom first. And if we'll get the priority of kingdom first, then our guidance, then our finance, then our family and everything else will be blessed. Somebody say a good amen right here. Everything else will be blessed. See, the Christian life is not me first. The Christian life is never about me first. It's about the kingdom first. And it doesn't matter how old or young that you might be, if you'll begin to say that with your heart, with your mind, with your spirit, not me first, but the kingdom first, then your life will be in alignment with God's blessing and it will get in alignment with the favor of Almighty God. The second thing that we're going to focus on this morning is the alignment of relationships. Think about that just for a moment. If you want the blessings of God upon your life, you want the favor of God to overtake you, you've got to get in alignment for his blessing. And you first got to be reconciled unto others. You've got to be reconciled unto other people. Amen. Jesus always emphasized the connection between the vertical and the horizontal. He always told us, you can't have a great connection point with me vertically if you have a terrible relationship with everything and everyone else horizontally. So in order to have a healthy, vertical, God-honoring, God-seeking, purpose-driven relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, an intimacy, a fellowship with God that will seize you, that will motivate you and strengthen you, then you must maintain your horizontal relationships with those around and about you. We've got to find forgiveness in those relationships. We've got to find strength in those relationships. We've got to make peace with our adversaries, so to speak, in as much as it depends on you. Sometimes somebody may look at you and say, I don't want to have relationship with you. In as much as you can, you can find forgiveness of them and find connection with them. That's what God is trying to get you to. And in and through that, God says, I can bless a life that's humble before me. I can bless that kind of person. I can bless that kind of individual. Now, Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 in verse 24, I won't read it for you, but God is saying to us that if you were in a position of unforgiveness, if you were coming to God's house and you were offended, it does no good for you to bring an offering unto the kingdom of God. It does no good for you to bring a sacrifice of praise if you're walking in unforgiveness and you are walking in offense. But scripture says when you go, when you go and you begin to make those things right, then God will release the blessing on the offering that you've brought. And he's going to pour out his favor. He's going to pour out his strength upon your life. Point number three this morning. Point number three this morning. The alignment of authority. The alignment of authority. Matthew chapter 12 and verse, verse 29 
it teaches us that God tells us that first we need to enter the strong man's house before we take someone's goods and spoil their house. He said to first bind the strong man. That's the problem with some of us this day and age and culture. We've not bound the devil in our lives. We've not bound the enemy of our souls. We just kind of let him run rampant over each and every one of us. Well, the devil has stolen some things from you this morning. He has taken some things from you. And he's got your stuff sitting over in a storage unit. And I'm trying to tell you this morning that God wants you to go. And he wants you to take the authority to get those things things back but you got to bind the devil scripture says in the name of Jesus you got to bind the devil through the blood of Jesus Christ and if you want your stuff back you better take authority you better begin to bind that strong man listen to me this morning the church is not a defeated foe the church is not running around defeated and frustrated and aggravated we have authority over the spirit of lack come on somebody we've got authority over the spirit of fear we've got authority over the spirit of depression we've got authority over the spirit of suicide we've got authority over the spirit of discouragement but we've got to take that authority in the name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus Christ God has given us authority over the enemy of our soul over the enemy of this age over the enemy of this world in and through Jesus Christ now listen to me Listen to me. You need to walk in the clarity. You need to walk in the truth of what uh, of that authority. And you need to go back in there and take back what the devil has stolen from you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel that right there in my presence, in my spirit. I feel that in the presence of the Lord God right now. I feel that. I feel that. Point number four this morning. Point number four this morning. The alignment of the heart. We're talking about that we need to get an alignment. Look here, the alignment of the heart. We've been studying in weeks, in, in weeks prior to this weekend. There's another thing found in the, in the scriptures that God says, I want you to do first. It's in Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 38. Scripture begins to teach us. It teaches us that God tells us to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. And to love our neighbors as ourself. That's not two separate things. It's one definitive thing he's telling us to do. Love the Lord your God. All of your heart. All of your soul. All of your mind. All of your strength. And your neighbor as your say, as yourself. Now God is saying to you. Listen to me. He's saying to you. I want you to get in alignment with the fact that I love you. God loves each and every one of us. I don't run around listening to the voices of the enemy of my soul. I don't run around listening to the voices of the enemy telling me, hey, you better hate yourself because you're not good enough. You need to hate yourself because you're ugly. You need to hate yourself because you're stupid. You need to hate yourself because you're not educated enough or strong enough or financially prepared enough. Listen to me. You need to take authority over that. Get in alignment with the heart of God because that is not the voice voice of God you need to look back at that voice and say hey listen to me I need to tell you something I am favored of God I am a child of God I am loved of almighty God he laid down his life for me and so I'm going to get in alignment with my heart I'm going to get in alignment with others and I'm going to love myself I'm going to love those around and about me we were just studying in our life team this last week it wasn't the giants that kept the people out of the promised land it was those voices it was the eight spies out of ten it was those eight voices that kept them from victory those two spies kept saying Joshua and Caleb said we can do it we can take the land but those other eight voices were so much stronger and begin to begin to speak so much louder and the thing that will stop you listen the thing that will stop you from from taking hold of your dream the thing that will stop you from taking hold of your promised land will never be the giants that you that you see it will always be the voices that you listen to pay attention right here it's always the voices that you are that that you are leaning your ears to it will always be that voice of doubt do you know it It'll always be that voice of defeat. It'll always be that voice of never enough, that voice of unbelief in your mind. 
And you need to declare back at those voices and say, you can stop with the whispers. You can stop with the shouting. You can stop with all of those things. Devil, my Bible says that I am favored of Almighty God. My Bible says that I have his righteousness and I have his grace and I have his mercy upon my life. And I want to tell you something this morning. God has purposed me for his purposes. God has purposed me for his purposes. He has positioned me for his kingdom. He has called me unto this generation. I'm going to be engaged in it. Come on, somebody. I'm going to be engaged. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fifth thing that we're focused on this morning is the alignment of your purity. The alignment of your purity. Jesus was talking to several Pharisees. He was talking to all of these Pharisees and he began to speak to them and they would, they would wear white clothing from head to toe to show how strong that they were and how holy that they were, how powerful that they were, how godly that they were. Amen. And he began to say to them, he began to say to them in the scriptures in Matthew chapter 23 and verse 26, he said, you Pharisees are blind. He said, you blind Pharisee, first wash the inside of the cup. That's what he's telling them. Wash the inside of the cup. Wash the inside of the dish. And then the outside, outside will become clean also. A lot of times we want to get people into God's house and we want to start on the outside. We want to deal with their outside. Listen, listen, listen. The Spirit of God will deal with them. The Spirit of God starts on the inside. And that's exactly what Scripture's teaching uh, to each and every one of us. That That's the alignment of our inner world. World. That's the alignment of my thoughts, my attitudes, my actions, my attributes. Listen to me right here. You cannot take the man out of the slum. You need to start by taking the slum out of the man. D does that make sense? We've got to start on the inside and work on our way out. That's our thought life. The alignment, the alignment of our inner world is our purity. And the devil is attacking our purity in this day and age and culture. He's attacking it through our families. He's attacking it in our homes. He's attacking our purity in our marriages. And I want to tell you something. Your thought life helps strategically to control your actions and to control your deeds. You say, I want my actions to be good. I want my deeds to be good then you need to start on the inside. You need to begin paying attention to the inside of what God wants to do in and through your life. These religious leaders, they were so worried about looking the part on the outside. What if I could just look the part on the outside? But inside, Scripture says they were full of sin. It said that they were full of dead men's bones. And some people worry only about the outward appearance. They only worry about how they look. They only look, run around worrying about what other people are thinking about them. That is not the purposes of God. The greatest thing is to be kept clean from the inside. To have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ in your thought life. To have a relationship with him that is clean, that is righteous in your purity and in your attitude, and in your spirit. And dealing with the inside will directly affect the outside. Directly affect the outside. So I've got to ask you the question, have you dealt with your purity? Have you aligned your purity with Scripture? Have you begun to focus on those things? Put in your thoughts, your actions, your, atti your, your attitude, your attributes connected to the purposes of God. Number six, our alignment with the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our alignment with God's church. Now listen to me. I, I want to point some things out to you. And this will be on our U version. Uh, you, you'll be able to get all these scriptures and get all these notes in, uh, in and through all these things. And we're going to be posting for you online. In John chapter 20 and verse 19. And Acts chapter 20 and verse 7. Just a couple. Just a couple that I want to point out tells us that on the first day of the week, on Sunday, that the disciples were assembled together. It's talking about the Sabbath. Scripture tells us in Hebrews chapter 10 
Verse 24 and 25, don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. This is what we're talking about, having a hunger for God, having a passion for his kingdom, having a, having a hunger for everything that he's doing in and through our hearts, in and through our lives. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13, Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47 acts chapter 9 verse 31 through 32 romans chapter 10 and verse 17 james chapter 1 and verse 22 second timothy chapter 4 and verse 2 just to name a few just to give you a few about being connected to the house of god about being connected to other believers about connecting yourself to the body of the lord jesus christ i promise you if you will make god's house a priority you can watch, and his blessings are going to find you. His blessings are going to overtake you. It's going to overtake your family. He's going to overtake your children. He's going to overtake your children's children. If you will put yourself and purpose yourself into the kingdom of God and into the family of God. Listen to me. Listen to me. There's thing, there are things that God will do for you. There are things that God will do for you only in church coupled together only when you are connected together with the body of the lord jesus christ that he will not do for you by yourself scripture declares it scripture talks about it listen we are not orphans we are not orphans we are his children and the one thing i know about my children is that they are glad to be home my kids can't wait to come home they love to be home they can't wait to get into the presence of their family do you feel that way about the house of God? Do you feel that way about the purposes of God? Do you feel that way as a family? Are you investing that into your children, into your children's children, into your wife? Are you investing that? Listen, listen, listen. We all need encouragement. We all need correction. We all need edification, powerful words, powerful words. We all need guidance, and we all need the Spirit of God. The Bible says when all the disciples gather together in the upper room, supernatural things begin to occur. I want to be a part of that supernatural group. I want to be a part of what God is doing in the hearts and in the lives of all the people. Hallelujah. You'll begin to see that's God's house is a place that we take inventory. It's a place that we take inventory of our souls, inventory of our minds, our will, our action, our emotions. And you will begin to see direct blessings in alignment with how you are aligned with the body of Christ. Pay attention right here. You ready? Listen, how you treat God's house is how God's going to treat your house. I want my house to be blessed. I want it to be favored. I want the peace of God living in and over and through my home. Come on, somebody. I want God to move in that frame. I want to be aligned with his church. I want to be aligned with his body. Hallelujah. And finally, this morning, the alignment of your resources. Number seven, our final point this morning. The alignment of your resources. The alignment of your finances. Look here. In Deuteronomy chapter 26 and verse 2, the scripture states, put some of the first produce. God wants the first and he wants the best. Watch it. From every crop that you harvest into a basket and bring it to the designated place of worship. The place the Lord your God chooses for his name to be honored. That is on me. That is on me as a father. That's on me as a husband. That's on me as the leader of my family. He told me. He said, you take the first fruits. This is the alignment of our resources, the alignment of our finances. Here again, Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 9. God says, honor the Lord. Do you see that right there? He says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything that you produce. I want God to have my very first. I want God to have my very best. Hallelujah. And scripture tells us that we need to honor the Lord with the first fruits of all of our increase. And watch this. Watch this. And then it also says, then 
Your barns will be full. I need a full barn this morning. Anybody else? I need my resources to be full. Not just so I can sit around with full resources, but so that I can be a blessing to my generation. So that I can be a strength unto my neighbors. So that I can be a blessing unto my family and strengthen them. I'm going to give God my first. I'm going to give him my very best. I don't want to walk in trying to give God leftovers. Come on, somebody. That's not who I am. That's not what I want for my family. It's not what God wants for my life. And if I will honor God with my wealth, if I'll honor God with the best part of everything that I produce, then he will fill and he will overflow. Anybody need a filling this morning? Anybody need an overflow this morning? God will fill you. He will overflow you. When you give him your best, when you give him your first, watch this. The tithe scripture says, or the first tenth. That's what scripture is saying. The first tenth. Tenth of all of our finance, all of our resources, it belongs in the storehouse that you call your church. It belongs there. That's given unto God. We bring that unto God. I don't pay my tithe. I bring my tithe. I give it unto the Lord. And as I do, God blesses the 90% to go farther, to go faster, to do more things supernaturally than I ever dreamed of, that I ever thought of or imagined. What is that local church? What's that storehouse? The one that feeds your soul. The one that's strengthening your family. The one that's ministering to your teenager. The one that, that, that is strengthening you as, a, as, a, as, as your purpose of Almighty God. Amen. And as we align ourselves with the Word of God, I promise you, each and every one of these things, all seven of these things, we begin to align ourselves with the Word of God. God's going to open doors. I'm telling you, He's going to uh, open doors are going to come our way good ideas are going to come our way creativity is going to begin to overtake you and God's going to bless you in ways and and do things in your life that you never dreamed of that you never thought of or imagined you'll begin to rub shoulders with people you never dreamed you would get in the same room with when you get your finances in alignment with the kingdom of God when you begin to get these things in order all of these alignments our priorities our relationships our mind our purity all of these things we begin to get these a lot get these uh Uh, these priorities in alignment God is going to bless you he's going to strengthen you in ways that you never dreamed of ways that you never thought of ways that you never imagined God bless you today I want you to pray this prayer with me you say Pastor Mike I'm dealing with some things in my own heart I'm dealing with some things in my life I've got some priorities out of place I've got some things that are out of place and the spirit of God has come across these airwaves he's come across my living room he's come across this live video feed and God is speaking to my life right now I want you to pray this prayer with me I want you to pray this prayer with me come on do it if you will Jesus I thank you for all that you are today I surrender my life unto you I surrender my priorities unto you. I surrender my mind unto you. God, I surrender my purity, God, unto you today, Father God. I surrender my family, God. I surrender my purpose today, God, unto your hand, God. And I need you today, God, Lord, to bring me in alignment with all that you're doing. God, alignment with your kingdom, alignment with your church, alignment with your body today, Father God. And I know that you're going to strengthen me, that you're going to bless me today. God, help me, God, to take my eyes just off of me, just off of the things that I want, just off of my body, God, and begin to place them upon the spirit of the Lord. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, God, I'm going to thank you for all that you're going to do in Christ's wonderful and powerful name. If you prayed that prayer this morning with us, we believe that God is going to move upon you. We believe that God is going to strengthen you and impact you in ways that we never dreamed of, thought of, or imagined. We love you and we appreciate you so much. Thank you for joining us this morning. God bless you this week. May his favor shine upon you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us here online today. I hope the word has encouraged you, has inspired you, even with all that's going on in today's times. And I hope that you will continue throughout the week to listen to this, meditate on this, and have your own time with the Word. And also, if you would like to give financially to Legacy Church, you can also go to our website at www.legacyukiah.church and go to the Give tab, and we will greatly appreciate it. We hope that you have a blessed week, and we can't wait to meet with you again.
Thank you.